decided to say, you know what guys, we'll accept a high burden of taxation in order to look after the poor more. Despite that that's always been in their power, and it's shame on every Labour government who's called itself leftist that has never done this. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. We haven't that, had a leftist <laughs> Labour government for a while. <laughs> they never invoked it. So, like, I don't think there's fundamentally this idea that Scotland becomes independent, would be this liberal utopia, and suddenly the politics of anarchy. <clears throat> But equally on the other side, the idea that we founded the welfare state together as this one nation, that might be true. But currently, what you have to remember is that, as, as Patrick Harvey correctly points out, when the interests diverge, we're always in the minority. Mm -hmm. That politically, we're always in the minority. So when Scotland does have particular acute poverty issues, you're unlikely to get to the specific funding for that at a time in which we're particularly cash strapped. But we don't have the economic, well, sorry, we don't have the political clout to demand that when there are no um, Tory or very few, unfortunately, Lib Dem MPs in the government bench to demand that inside their own parliament. So on either side of, of this house, there is less that you're willing to, in reality, of what you're actually claiming. So I think there is a bit of uncertainty. I think we have to be a bit, a bit more measured. Yeah. That there might be other reasons that you vote yes or no, but don't like, lie to yourself that we'll create a Scottish utopia and, and uh, cover ourselves in salt towers. Or will solve poverty covered in the Union Jack? So it's a much more murkier question, and perhaps if you recognise that particular poll, we might have a better debate for it. Thank you. Uh, I studied history, which, uh, amongst many other things, um, made me feel very, very small and unimportant, and reminded me that there have been many hundreds of years the things coming after this, and there have been many hundreds of years of events beforehand. Uh, but like lots of my questions, I don't actually know the answer, so I'm rather hoping that the... Uh, I'm my flight on. Uh, but I'm, <laughs> I'm rather hoping um, some... Will they have wrapping up closing speeches? Okay, well, perhaps someone can answer the question for me, either in a or otherwise. But, um, if we didn't have the Scottish National Party, would this question of nationalism and an independent country be here at all, and really I guess what I'm asking is, are we naturally deciding that, uh, or is the Scottish nation <laughs> um, naturally deciding that it's coming towards the idea that actually, yeah, no, uh, well, this makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, or is the Scottish Nationalist Party the cat amongst the pigeons that's making everybody think about all the questions in that, in that frame? That's my question, and I hope someone can answer it for me. Mm -hmm. here tonight, given Rory has actually finally come away from the no sites lately and I may no longer be laughed at for being the only yes campaigner in my group of friends. I'm um, <laughs> 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 I'm going to sit here now, I'm obviously not a racist towards the English, I'm a quarter English, about an eighth Welsh, there's some Irish in there somewhere, basically I'm a Scot which means I'm pretty mixed. Um, I'm also, as many people will know, dating an Englishman, although he wouldn't like you to call him that, he's a Yorkshireman. <laughs> Absolutely. England is very much a set of regions in a way that Scotland isn't, okay? Scotland is more one nation than England is, okay? We are regionalised to an extent. When I arrived in St Andrews my first day here, I was told I sounded very East Coast something I'd never ever been told before. But this was because this other person was from East Kilbride and I'd never heard this sort of accent before. Um, for the record, in terms of some of the other points we made in the house tonight, um, I grew up in Dundee. Uh, I'd like to point out it's not as bad as some people say Andrews like to think. <coughs> Sorry, Dundee State School coming out here. Um, but basically, I think a lot of people would be better off if we were separate. You can argue with the economics till you're blue in the face. I think we'd get by one way or another. I think the main issue here is one of representation. Now this is more in response to Freddie here. England is a foreign country to me, and always has been. Before I came to university, I'd left mainland Scotland three times, and only one of those was actually to go properly south of the border very, very briefly. And it's more foreign to me in many ways than parts of Europe. It has cultural differences, there are differences there, 
you know, I'm not being racist here. It is just, you know, from here to London, it's quite a distance. And across that distance, you find difference. This is what happens naturally. It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that because the English are different to me, they are wrong. I'm saying they're different. Therefore, given the fact we live in a globalizing world, where international institutions and international bodies, etc., are becoming more and more important, I want a representative there that is closer culturally to me, closer geographically to me, and somebody I can relate to more, and that can more importantly relate to me more, than someone that's in London. Okay, a government that sits in Edinburgh, because it represents fewer people, because it governs a geographically smaller area, provided it uses the correct electoral system, which it sounds like it will, is going to be more representative. That's the way it works, okay? Then, when this you know, government or whatever has other representatives elsewhere that go and they represent us on the international stage, they are also going to be more representative. And this is what is important. You're going on about, you know, I think it was Mr. Rennie here that was saying about small countries, you know, aren't viable in the modern world and all this sort of thing. That, well, no, it was successful modern countries don't break up, okay? Arguably, we are now in the age of the nation state, okay? Because in international institutions where you need representation, you need nation states, i.e. one nation equals a state. Because if you have a multi-nation state, having a coherent voice is nigh on impossible. This then leads to problems, because if you have each representative in this international institution, same as say in a parliament, trying to represent all these different views and interests, and then this is going in with you know, several hundred others saying, oh, we only represent about five different interests. It doesn't work, it gets too complicated. I feel that Scotland could have a more coherent voice on the international stage if we were separate, because we do have more coherent interests than England does. Because we are geographically smaller, because possibly partly because of contrasting ourselves with the, with the English, and because of the way the United Kingdom was formed, we have a coherent national identity. I think we would be more representative. I also agree with the others in that we would probably be economically better off. We could get rid of nuclear weapons and all the rest of it because this is what the Scottish people want. In terms of education, I'm not worried about funding for education because in Scotland it's always been a priority to fund education. It's why I don't pay tuition fees because in Hollywood it was prioritised. We don't we have a limited pot of money, but education, that's free. That's free at the point of access, that's it. That's something that's always been in the Scottish psyche and isn't going to change. It's still there. Same with the NHS. Even if we have limited money, we're still going to prioritise these things because we always have. There's very few people in Scotland who vote against that. That's why so few people in Scotland vote Conservative. Because inherently, at the international stage, we call us left wing. Because we value looking after each other. Partly because we are a small nation, partly because we possibly have more challenging geography than some other places. We have this in our national psyche that we look after each other no matter what, because it could be us one day. That's the whole point. I mean, here, think about it. If we were anywhere else, and this was a larger town, or we were somewhere else in England that was more isolated, we wouldn't have necessarily the same awareness of somewhere else. Even if we were a section of a city, we might not venture into other parts of that city to experience what poverty looks like. But here in Scotland, because of the way our geography works, and also because we have so few shops here, most of us will venture into Dundee at some point and see, oh, this is what poverty looks like. Okay, this is what a tenant is. <laughs> so let's face it, it is much more representative. So I'm voting yes for Independent Scotland, not because I like the SNP. I vote for them, I don't like them, I want rid of them once Independence comes in. <laughs> Apologies, Mr. Don, but I want more of a green. Um, <laughs> so, frankly, don't bitch about Alex Salmond when you're deciding why not to vote, vote yes. Don't bitch about some lies that happened. Vote yes because it would lead to us having a more representative state and a more representative international voice. Vote yes because you see that somebody that sits in Edinburgh instead of London is likely to represent you better and your views better. And because Scotland has never been conservative, yet we keep getting conservative governments. It doesn't matter if we occasionally get a Labour one. As long as we can still have this government that's unrepresentative, I don't want to be part of the United Kingdom. Um, my name is Daniel Goldblatt. Um, I'm, I look at this from a slightly um, removed perspective. I'm not Scottish, I'm not English, I'm not Welsh, I'm South African. Um, and so my, obviously my views aren't quite neat. 
was uh, tightly bound in this up with uh, this issue as, as others do. Um, but um, I w would just like to, to sort of put my view and experience uh, on it. So during, during the summer, I was with a lot of other South African friends down in London, uh, went to a lot of the Olympic parks and watched the games. And uh, like a famous South African this summer, uh, Chad Lukoska's father, who wept um, hysterically when, it, when his son won. There were lots and lots of little South African Chad Lukoska's fathers all over the place weeping every time a British team uh, won a gold medal. It was, it was a really bizarre sight to be part of that. And uh, I'm not that emotional, but I, I really did weep every time uh, Chris Hoy crossed the finish line or you had uh, members of, uh, other Scottish members of the, of the United Kingdom team coming. And it, it was a real admiration for, this, um, for the sense of unity. Um, and th this, this, uh, this idea of unity is an incredibly powerful rhetorical device. And you see it, uh, you saw it during the Olympics, and you see it on the side of the House uh, speakers on the floor. And most potently, you saw it in Obama's acceptance, first acceptance speech and his, his latest one. Um, the idea of the constituent parts coming, coming together as a whole. Um, but what's, what's really fascinating about the American case of the constituent parts of coming to a whole is, and Obama talked about this is, in his speech, is that every state within the United States is, a, is an experiment. Like, like um, the, the famous Scots members of the Enlightenment, like uh, Hume, um, who, 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 experiment, who uh, looked at things empirically and experimented with life. Uh, to derive what was best and what was efficient. Um, every state is a political experiment, and every state learns from each other in the sum, the sum of their holes, and takes what's best from each other, and learns from it, and brings it together. And what's amazing about the United Kingdom is you have that, and with devolution, you have that even more, of England being able to learn from Scots, and Scots, the Scots being able to learn, uh, to learn from England, and take what's best about each system. Um, and you've had that, and England has probably benefited most from that. I mean, the person who, who founded the Bank of Ling England was a Scot. Adam Smith, who came down south, was a Scot. Um, Gordon Brown, whether you like him or not, was a, was a Scot. You guys have an enormous amount of influence on how this country has been shaped and is run. You're part of that constituent whole. And I think it is in, it, the, the idea of unity is a powerful rhetorical device which, device which can often override, um, uh, override the more rational elements of this argument. But I do think that when you see that idea of the experiment and being able to take what's best, you worried on the side of the house about where progress would come from. What we've seen over the last 300 years of, of, of union, that progress happens through that experimentation. And I think if you do stand for progress, and if you do stand for that idea of really um, becoming part of, of a greater experiment or being part of a continued experiment, I think you stand with the side of the house.